Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about pronouns and phrasal verbs. We will also talk about giving and receiving presents. But first, let's take a look at pronouns. Pronouns are the words we use to talk about people and things in place of the actual nouns. Okay, let's look at the chart. A subject pronoun is doing the action. Um, the object pronoun is receiving the action. Possessive adjective talks about ownership. Possessive pronoun also talks about ownership, but it's a noun. And reflexive pronoun talks about the subject, back to the subject. I, me, my, mine, myself. He, him, his, his, himself. She, her, her, hers, herself. It, it, its, its, itself. You, you, your, yours, yourself. We, us, our, ours, ourselves. They, them, their, theirs, themselves. Okay, remember, subject pronouns are the ones doing the action. So usually they are the most important part of the sentence. They are the focus of the sentence. Okay, so let's look at some examples of subject pronouns. She, subject pronoun, right, gave him a present. She gave him a present. Second example, I am giving you a gift. Subject pronoun in this sentence is I. I am giving you a gift. Next example, they give you presents on your birthday. Many, there are many pronouns in this sentence, but the subject is they, the doer of the action. They give you presents on your birthday. Next example, we have a present for you. Subject pronoun is we. We have a present for you. It is a gift for you. Yes, even it can be a subject pronoun. So it is a gift for you. Last sentence. You are buying a CD player for your sister. Okay, subject pronoun is you. You are buying a CD player for your sister. So now we understand subject pronouns. Let's take a look at object pronouns. Object pronouns are the receiver of the action of the verb. Let's look at some examples. She saw him. Now this time we want to look at the receiver of the action. That pronoun is him. She saw him. Next example. Did you buy this for me. Okay? Object pronoun is me. Did you buy this for me? The teacher taught her. Okay? Object pronoun is her. The teacher taught her. I bought it for you. It. Object pronoun. I bought it for you. They will give you a present on your birthday. So they will give you a present on your birthday. The school gave us a book. Okay, the school gave us a book. We gave them some money. We gave them some money. Object pronouns. Okay, now let's talk about possessive pronouns. 
excuse me, possessive adjectives, the next group. Now remember, a possessive adjective must be followed by a noun, the noun that it modifies, the noun it describes. Okay, this is my book. Okay, what book? We use a possessive adjective to tell us what book. My book. So this is my book. His pen is on the table. Whose pen? His pen. Possessive adjective. His pen is on the table. Her book is red. Possessive adjective? Her. Her book is red. Its name is Fluffy. Fluffy the cat. Whose name? Its name is Fluffy. What is your name? Possessive adjective, your. What is your name? Our teacher gave us some homework. Our teacher gave us some homework. Their children like presents. Possessive adjective, their. Their children like presents. Okay, good job on the possessive adjectives. Now, what's next? Next on the chart, possessive pronouns. Now, possessive pronouns are like possessive adjectives, except they don't need a noun after, because they are the noun. Talking about ownership, okay? This is mine. So instead of saying, this is my pen, if we already know what we're talking about, we can say, this is mine, possessive pronoun. That is hers. Okay, so this pen is mine. This is mine. That's hers. That is hers. Okay? All right, next one. Where is yours? So here is my pen, this is mine, that is hers, where is yours, right? Possessive pronoun. These are ours. These are ours. And these books are theirs. These books are theirs. Okay, good job. Next group. Reflexive pronouns. Now, reflexive pronouns refer back to the subject. So, I bought myself a new car. Okay? I can say, I bought her a new car, but because the object's referring back to me, we can use a reflexive pronoun. I bought myself a new car. He went by himself. He went by himself. She made a fabulous chocolate cake herself. Okay, so you can say she made it herself. It opened by itself. So the when caused the door to open. It opened by itself. Did you make this by yourself? Okay, reflexive pronoun, yourself. Did you make this by yourself? You must do this yourselves. You must do this yourselves. We made these ourselves. We made these ourselves. And they 
bought this themselves. They bought this themselves. So now let's talk about possessive pronouns. These are new to you, so we need to practice them. Okay, follow these examples. Your book is red. First sentence, your book is red. We know now we're talking about a book. So now I can say, mine is blue, right? Meaning my book, but not necessary. We can say, mine is blue. I saw your book, but I lost mine. Okay, so I saw your book, but my book I lost, but I lost mine. Okay, look at these sentences. This is my book. Yours, your book, is on the table. Those are my books. Yours, your books, are on the table. All right, so let's repeat. This is my book. Yours is on the table. Those are my books. Yours are on the table. Notice that even when a pronoun ends in S, it's either singular, excuse me, singular, singular, or plural. All right, so let's practice a bit. Anna, my pen is on the table. Where is yours? Mine is on my desk. Good. What are we talking about, Anna? Pants. Very good. Alberto, Anna's pen is on her desk. Where is Sylvia's? Hers is on her desk. Very good. Sylvia, my mother is at home. Where is yours? Mine is at home, too. And what are we talking about, Sylvia? Mothers. Very good. Alberto, my house has three bedrooms. What about yours? Mine has three bedrooms, too. Okay. And what are we talking about? Houses. That's right. Sylvia, Anna's country has many beautiful places. How about yours? Ours has beautiful places, too. I'm sure it does. Okay, one more. Anna, Alberto's football team is very good. How about Sylvia's? Hers is good, too, but I think she doesn't like football. All right, thank you. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Which ones are yours, the red ones or the green ones? Mine are the green ones, and yours are the red ones. I think these gloves are his. Those are hers. No, these gloves are hers, and those gloves are his. Our new house is very nice. Ours is nice, too. I love your new car. Theirs is beautiful, too. Read and repeat. Direct and indirect objects. Now let's talk about indirect objects. Before, we talked about direct objects. So let's review. Take a look at these sentences. We can say, we saw him. Now remember, the direct object is the object of the action, the object of the verb. 
We saw what? Him. Direct object. I like presents. Okay. What do we like? Presents. Object of the verb like. My mother loves me. My mother loves what or whom? Me. My mother loves me. We gave a party. We gave a party. All right, so let's look at the different parts of speech in these sentences. Okay, we is the subject, saw is the verb, him is the direct object. And we can see the same pattern in these other sentences. For example, I like presents. Sylvia, can you tell us the parts of speech in I like presents? I is the subject, like is the verb, and presence is the direct object. Very good, Sylvia. I is the subject, like is the verb, presence is the direct object. All right, Anna, can you do the next sentence? My mother is the subject, loss is the verb, me is the direct object. My mother is the subject, loves is the verb, me is the direct object. All right. Um, Alberto, the last one. We is the subject, give is the verb, and a party is the direct object. Okay. We is the subject, gave is the verb, a party is the direct object. Good job, everyone. Now let's talk about indirect objects. So here is a sentence with both a direct object and an indirect object so that you can understand the difference. I gave a present to my mother. Okay? So the subject is easy. I. Okay? The verb is gave. But we have two objects. Gave what? A present. So this has to be the direct object. But who did we give the present to? My mother. Now we have an indirect object. All right, let's try another example. I lent $10 to my friend. To lend something means to give for a short time. So the person has to give it back. I lent $10 to my friend. All right, let's practice discussing the different parts of speech. Okay, um, Anna, you start. I is the subject. Good. I is the subject. Alberto? Lent is the verb. Lent is the verb. Good. Sylvia? Ten dollars is the direct object. Ten dollars is the direct object. Keep going, Sylvia. My friend is the indirect object. Good. My friend is the indirect object. All right. Good job. Anna, who lent? I lent. What did I lend, Alberto? Ten dollars. Good. Sylvia, who did I lend to? My friend. Great. Now notice that the indirect, ob excuse me, the direct object comes first before the indirect object in a sentence. We can also make the same sentences a different way. Okay, look at these sentences. I lent my friend ten dollars. What's different? There is no two. And the places of the direct object and the indirect object have changed, right? So, Anna, who lent? I lent. Good. And what did I lend, Alberto? Ten dollars. Okay. And Sylvia, who did I lend to? My friend. Good. 
So there are two different ways to write the same sentence. So you can write first subject, verb, direct object, to or for, and then the indirect object. Or a different way, subject, verb, indirect object, and then your direct object. Now that we understand direct objects and indirect objects, let's practice. I will give you the words and you make the sentences in two ways. Okay, let's see. I give you my pen and Anna, I gave. Alberto, can you do this one? I gave my pen to Anna. I gave my pen to Anna. Good. I gave Anna my pen. All right. I gave Anna my pen. So the first sentence puts the direct object first and then the indirect object. Second sentence changes places. So you have your indirect object first and then your object, direct object. All right, Alberto, can we say, I gave Anna to my pen? No, that's very funny. Okay, good. Anna, here is one for you. I'll give you our teacher and a postcard Maria sent. Maria sent a postcard to our teacher. Okay, Maria sent a postcard to our teacher. Good. And uh, Maria sent our teacher a postcard. Maria sent our teacher a postcard. Very good. Okay, Sylvia. I have one for you also. For Sylvia, we have us. My grandfather showed and his photo. My grandfather showed us his photo. My grandfather showed us his photo. Good. My grandfather showed his photo to us. My grandfather showed his photo to us. All right, very good. Can we say, my grandfather showed us to his photo? Huh? No, that's a crazy sentence. That's right. All right, good job, everyone. Let's practice looking for direct objects and indirect objects. I will give you some sentences. I want you to tell me which is the direct object and which is the indirect object. Okay, more examples. Okay, Anna, look at the first sentence and tell me the direct object and the indirect object. She bought him a present for his birthday. Him is the indirect object and the present is the direct object. Good. Him is, an, is the indirect object and a present is the direct object. Okay, and how do we say the sentence when we change the positions of the direct and indirect objects? She bought a present for him for his birthday. She bought a present for him for his birthday. All right, good. She bought a present, okay, direct object, for him, indirect object. Now, Sylvia, can you please look at this next sentence and tell us the direct object and the indirect object. He gave her some flowers for passing her exams. Some flowers is the direct object and the indirect object is her. Good. And how do we say the sentence if we change the positions of the direct and indirect objects? 
He gave some flowers to her for passing her exams. Good. He gave some flowers to her for passing her exams. Very good. Okay, Alberto, this is your sentence. They gave us some flowers and chocolates. The direct object the some flowers and chocolates the indirect object is us okay so the direct objects are some flowers and chocolates indirect object is us okay and how can you write the sentence a different way they gave some flowers and chocolates to us they gave some flowers and chocolates to us all right, very good. Sylvia, here's another one for you. You're all doing very well. Children give presents to their parents. Sylvia. Present, presence is the direct object and their parents is the indirect object. Good. Presence is the direct object. Their parents is the indirect object. Okay, and the other way to say the sentence. Children give their parents presents. Children give their parents presents. Okay, good. So now we understand how to write the sentences two ways if they have a direct object and an indirect object. Great job, everyone. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Sylvia wrote a long letter to her boyfriend. Anna gave a nice present to her sister. Alberto lent his sister 20 euros. Our teacher passed the student her pen. The student passed mine to the teacher. Read and repeat. Now let's practice some more with pronouns. I will write some sentences and you fill in the blanks with the correct pronoun. Okay, Anna, this one's for you. Which one is, mm -hmm, your clue is you. The red one or the green one? Which one is yours? Good. Which one is yours? Okay, let's see. Sylvia's sentence. Mm -hmm. Your clue is she looked at. Mm -hmm. Second clue is she in the mirror. Sylvia. She looked at herself in the mirror. Okay, good. She looked at herself in the mirror. Excellent. Anna, this one's for you. I think this one is... Mm -hmm. Your clue is you. That one is... Mm -hmm. Second clue is I. Anna. I think this one is yours. All right. That one is mine. Very good. I think this one is yours. That one is mine. One more. This one's for Alberto. I made this. Mm -hmm. Clue is I. Do. Mm -hmm. Second clue is you. Want some. Alberto. 
I make this myself. Good. Do you want some? Very good. I made this myself. Do you want some? All right, good job, everyone. Okay, it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. She looked at herself in the mirror. Which ones are yours? My sister bought me a CD for my birthday. Their family gave them some money for their birthdays. I gave her some CDs and some chocolates. Read and repeat. Phrasal verbs. Now we are going to look at some special verbs. We call them phrasal verbs, and native speakers use them a lot when speaking. Phrasal verbs. All right, please look at your computer and follow these examples. Switch on. Switch off. Turn up, turn down, hand in, hand out, give up, turn over, hang up, get up. All right, notice that we use prepositions with these verbs. Phrasal verbs are special because you can't usually find them in a dictionary. And they can sometimes change their meaning when we use them in different sentences or when we talk about different situations. So look at these examples and you will understand what I mean. First example, hang up your coat. Hang up your coat means Put it in your closet or put it on the coat stand. But you can also say, hang up the phone. All right, hang up the phone can mean finish your phone call and put the phone back on the receiver. Okay, like normal verbs, we use phrasal verbs with different tenses by changing the verb part. For example, he is hanging up his coat. He is hanging up his coat. Past tense, I hung up the phone when I finished my call. So in this first example, he is hanging up his coat. We can use present continuous by changing only the verb. We don't change the preposition. In the same way, we can switch to past tense and say, I hung up the phone when I finished my call. Okay, let's look at some examples of sentences with phrasal verbs so that you can see how we use them. First example, switch on the light. It's very dark in here. Okay, switch on the light, it's very dark in here. Second example, when you go to bed, don't forget to switch off the light. So when you go to bed, don't forget to switch off the light. Turn up the TV, please. 
I can't hear it. Okay? Turn up the TV, please. I can't hear it. Turn down the music. It's loud. Turn down the music. It's loud. The teacher handed out some books to the students. The teacher handed out some books to the students. Hand in your homework to the teacher when you finish it. Hand in your homework to the teacher when you finish it. So now we're going to look at some more examples of phrasal verbs because they are very important. You must be careful how you use the phrasal verbs because they can change their meaning if we're talking about different objects. Okay, switch on the light. It's very dark in here. When you go to bed, don't forget to switch off the light. Turn up the TV, please. I can't hear it. Turn down the music. It's loud. The teacher handed out some books to the students. Hand in your homework to the teacher when you finish it. My friend said he will buy me a present if I give up smoking. Turn over the page to see the answer on the other side. What time do you usually get up in the morning? Okay, now see if you can guess what the phrasal verb means in each sentence. Sylvia, let's look at the first sentence and you tell me what you think it means. Switch on the light. It's very dark in here. I think switch on means turn the switch so that the light will start. Very good. Yes, we use switch on to talk about starting machines or things that use electricity. We can also say turn on. It means the same as switch on the light. Okay, Anna, what do you think this sentence means? When you go to bed, don't forget to switch off the light. I think that it means the opposite of switch on. So uh, it means turn the light so that the light will stop. Yes, yeah, switch off means the opposite of switch on. And we can also say turn off the light. All right, now Alberto, you try this sentence. What does it mean? Turn up the TV, please. I can't hear it. I think turn up means increase or make more because the person speaking wants uh, more noise, so he can't hear it. That's right. Turn up means increase something, but we only use it for machines. I can't say turn up your voice when I want to hear you speak louder, but I can say turn up the TV or turn up the radio. Okay, Sylvia, you can try the next one. Turn down the music, it's loud. I guess that turn down is the opposite of turn up. I think it means decrease or make something less because the speaker wants less noise. Yes, turn down means the opposite of turn up. Okay, Anna, the next sentence for you. What does it mean? The teacher handed out some books to the students. I think that handout means to give to people because we are talking about teacher giving some books to the students. Yes, that's right. Handout means one person giving something out to a group of people. Okay, Alberto, you can try the next one. Hand in your homework to the teacher when you finish it. I think hand, uh, hand in must mean the opposite of hand out. If hand out means uh, one person giving something to each person in a group, then hand in means uh, each person in a group is giving something to one person. All right, very good, Alberto. 
Hand in is the opposite of hand out. Sylvia, do you want to try another sentence? Look at this one and tell me what it means. My friend said he will buy me a present if I give up smoking. Okay, well, smoking is a bad thing to do, and the friend says he will buy me a present if I give up smoking. So it means, uh, give up means, must means, sorry, I'm confused a little bit. Uh, You're doing very well. Keep going. I think give up means to stop doing something. Yes, that's very good detective work, Sylvia. Give up means to stop doing something, usually forever. It has the same meaning as quit. All right, Anna, look at this sentence and tell me about it. Turn over the page to see the answer on the other side. Okay, I think this one means change pages so that you can see the other uh, side of pages, like when you read book. Yes, very good. So turn over means to look at the other side of the page. Very good. All right, Alberto, the next one is for you. What time do you usually get up in the morning? What does that mean? Get up means here, uh, wake up and uh, leave the bed. All right, now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Turn off the TV when you go to bed. Switch on the TV, please. Turn down the radio. It's too noisy. Switch off the computer when you finish. Hand in your report tomorrow. Read and repeat. Listen and write. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen to the sentences and write them. Anna gave her brother a birthday card. My mother gave me a shirt for my birthday. What did your parents buy you for your graduation present? My manager gave me a new car. He gave her some red flowers because he loves her. Can you lend me 20 euros? I lent you 10 euros last month. I want to tell you a sad story. Anna showed her new photos to her friends. My best friend gave me a book and a CD. Now check your answers. Anna gave her brother a birthday card. My mother gave me a shirt for my birthday. What did your parents buy you for your graduation present? My manager gave me a new car. He gave her some red flowers because he loves her. Can you lend me 20 euros? I lent you 10 euros last month. 
I want to tell you a sad story. Anna showed her new photos to her friends. My best friend gave me a book and a CD. Now read the story and answer the questions about it. Read and answer. It was my friend Mike's birthday last month, so we decided to give him a surprise birthday party in his favorite bar. All his friends came to the bar, but we didn't tell Mike anything about the party. I told him to meet me at the bar because we were going out for a meal together somewhere. When he got to the bar, he was very pleased and surprised because he found out that all his friends were there waiting for him. They gave him lots of presents, including books, CDs, a watch, and a cigarette lighter. We also gave him a big birthday cake with his name on it and 25 candles because he was 25 years old. We sang happy birthday and everyone had a very good time. After he cut the cake, we all told him happy birthday and the party continued all night. There was music and lots of food and drinks for everybody. Mike was very happy. He told us it is Susan's birthday soon. She will be 26 years old. We can have another party next month. Now, answer these questions about the story. Who had a birthday last month? What did we do for his birthday? What did I plan with Mike? What did his friends give him? How many candles were on his birthday cake? Did everybody have a good time? What did we sing to him? Why was Mike happy? How old will Susan be next month? What did Mike tell us about next month? Now check your answers. Who had a birthday last month? It was Mike's birthday last month. What did we do for his birthday? You gave him a surprise birthday party. What did I plan with Mike? Mike could meet you at the bar. What did his friends give him? His friends gave him some books, CDs, a watch, and a cigarette lighter. How many candles were on his birthday cake? There were 25 candles on his birthday cake. Did everybody have a good time? Yes, everybody had a good time. What did we sing to him? You sang happy birthday to him. Why was Mike happy? Mike was happy because everybody came to his birthday party. How old will Susan be next month? Susan will be 26 years old next month. What did Mike tell us about next month? We will have another surprise birthday party next month. All right, good job, everyone. See you next time. Practicing English. Well, my mom's birthday party went really well. She really liked the gift that Carrie and I picked out for her. Oh, what did you get her? Well, it was kind of expensive, but we bought her a really nice wristwatch. That's a really nice idea. Did she like it? Yes, she really liked it. 
I was so happy because buying presents for people can be really hard. I always worry that I'll buy the wrong size or the wrong color, or that the person won't like what I bought for them at all. I know. It's really fun sometimes to buy gifts for other people, but I worry about the same thing. Will the person really like the gift, or will they just say, "Oh, I, I really liked it. Just be nice." Well, that reminds me of a present I got once for Christmas. It was terrible. What happened? Well, I have this very nice old auntie in Pennsylvania, and she always sends the most unusual gifts to my brother and me. Last year, we got these pajamas and towels with superheroes on them. My brother got Batman, and I got Spiderman. <laughs> That'd be a great <laughs> gift. Well, it would be if we were eight years old, but I was twenty-five. Well, I guess my aunt still thinks that we are little boys. Something like that happened to me at Christmas too. I got the CD player alarm radio, and it was also a stuffed animal. It was a pig. Oh, and I almost forgot. It was a phone too. <laughs> That's really funny, Angie. What do people say when your phone rang? Angie, your pig is ringing. <laughs> We did say that, but wait, it gets worse. My brother gave me this gift that he knew I'd be totally confused by. He was right. I didn't know how to turn it on. I didn't know how to turn it off. So the first night, I put it in my room, and while I was sleeping, the alarm clock part switched on, and I couldn't turn it off. Ah. The music was really loud. I woke up the whole house. I couldn't turn it down, and I couldn't turn it off until my brother had to come in and figured it out. It was horrible. Where is it now? I think I gave it away or threw it out. After that first night. I knew it had to go. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I like the tradition of giving presents to my friends and family. Okay, I have to admit I like to、uh, get presents too. <laughs> What is the best gift you've ever received? Well, I guess it was a present that I got one year for my birthday. I was turning ten years old, and I really wanted a new bike. Every kid in the world wants to get a bike when they're ten. Yes, but I saw this most amazing bike in a magazine. I thought I would die if I didn't get it. I really wanted it so much. Right before my birthday, my dad called me into his room, and told me to sit down. He explained that the bike was an expensive gift, and that I shouldn't be disappointed if I didn't get exactly what I wanted. Did you get the bike? Yes, he was just having fun with me. He had the bike in the garage already, and the next day, I got my dream bike. Did you like it? I loved it. It was like a dream come true for me. What a nice story! It's a great example of how special it is to give and receive gifts. Alexei still remembers getting that special gift when he was ten. What about you, Sam? Do you have any stories about giving or receiving presents that you would like to share with us? Yes, I do. One year, I thought up this really funny trick to play on my sister. What did you do? Well, my sister loves animals—puppies, kittens, cuddly animals. So one year, I captured a whole bunch of frogs and toads from the pond outside our house, and I put them in a box. I wrapped them up real nice, and I told her I had a special surprise for her. Oh no! I see where this is going. Yep, at her birthday party, she carefully opened the box and was hoping a little kitten was inside for her. Instead, when she took the lid off the box, the frogs and toads jumped out and scared her and her friends. They ran and screamed and cried. That was a really bad joke to play on your sister, Sam. Don't worry, she got even. The next year, she put a snake in a box and scared me to death. Now we just take each other out for dinner. No presents.